Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Season 4. This time from just outside Olympia, Washington at a Flying J truck stop. I believe I'm about a little bit under two hours from Crystal Mountain here, so I had a great night of sleep. Absolutely love truck stops. I took a shower last night, you know, hot coffee in the morning, kind of anything else you need is all right here. So honestly, probably my number one place to sleep in the winter are truck stops. So I think we're all good in here, and now it's time to roll, continue north, and I think a little bit east. Um, to Crystal Mountain. I should have known, but I didn't realize just how close I was going to be to Mount Rainier, which has probably been one of the most beautiful places I, I've ever been. So um knowing that we're kind of right around the corner from there and hoping because it's such a beautiful day we'll be able to see it from the top of crystal mountain will be pretty cool and i just kind of like driving up through the forest just reminded me just like just how much fun i had on my rainier and just like sort of like pnw summer trip last year so looking forward uh looking forward to being out here monday morning This is our final day of the hash brown turkey bacon and scramby breakfast just because I've used it all up so I'm gonna have to try to mix it up for the next few days see what we can get but uh, I am using a new backpack today I feel like skiing camera backpacks or whatever like vlogging backpacks are hard to come by I feel like I've never really found the one that's worked like super well for me the GoPro one is the best option it just fits everything I need um, but it's also very lightweight and small and super easy to ski with. So I really love that GoPro backpack. But um, this company, Douchebags, which was started by Yoon Olsen, who is honestly one of like the pioneers in vlogging and skiing and stuff like that. And they ended up sending me a backpack of my choice. And I chose this DB 34 liter ski touring like backpack camera bag. These bags are all really, really well built. Like just from even like how the buckle system works to the zippers, like this is a very quality backpack. So inside um, I have a camera cube here that will fit my camera and lens and kind of whatever else I need in here. So it's nice that I can actually secure my camera equipment for once because I usually just throw it in and it's just like free balling in the backpack. There's a ton of features in here. There's like a dry bag system. There's a nice little lens carrying compartment. Um, you know, this whole thing kind of opens up and rolls down for more space. And then you can fit on this outside. This is kind of like where you'd put like an ice ax or something more wet um, so i actually put my big camera poles in here and then probably one of the coolest things is you can fit skis on the side so i think we're going to be doing a hike today so that's why i figured this might be a good bag to you so lots of features it's not really a review and i've never used this before so i might end up not even liking it but just figured i'd show you guys because the backpack is such an integral yet not talked about part of what i do so looks pretty sweet Try it out. And I forgot, you can go to dbjourney.com and use the code LucasGatania15 to save you some money and help support the channel. So, yeah. I don't believe I was fully prepared to get a smack dab view of Mount Rainier as soon as I got off the gondola, but I'm gonna figure out where to go from here. But honestly, I feel like I could just sit up here and just film and look at Rainier and the surrounding Cascades because it's that incredible. But you guys are here to see skiing, not, uh, not Mount Rainier, but let's go.
chill out. Guys, this is uh, probably one of the best moments of my life. I mean, look at that. That is Mount Rainier, and there's a gentleman sharing. You can see Mount St. Helens, you can see Mount Adams, and even Mount Hood in the distance. And I think one of these is Mount Baker. Like, I guess you can see a bunch of peaks that you can't typically do. So, at this point, the skiing is just secondary. <laughs> but, let's see. There is an area hill I think called Storm King or King or something like that that I've just been staring at and as with other things in skiing I feel like I just got to go at it and just kind of get it over with so because it's so nice out and it's still a little bit early in the day rather than push this off till later in the afternoon I think I'm going to do this boot pack. I don't know how long it's going to take. It looks pretty long from where I am to where I get there but you know that's why we're here. Got this pack to try out putting the skis on the, the sides. And other than that, beautiful day to hike and enjoy the mountains. Go up this way. Okay. But there becomes, there should become a fork. Where okay. you can go left. Left will take you up to Kings. Right will take you to Beach, which is kind of a round to the right. Um, it's just a little less vertical. Okay. But I would try to stay left, which is a more steep climb. Okay. If you want to get to Kings. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Looks like I hit sort of the first shoulder or saddle area. It looks like I can put my skis on and ski down this ridge line for a little bit and then I'm probably gonna have to put my skis back up for the final ascent there but it looks looks pretty gnarly luckily the boot packs pretty chill accidentally took the wrong way and ended up skiing like around the mountain. So literally had to hike all the way back out. But we made it now, a little bit extra work and all part of the, uh, the adventure. Just call it king for now but man just the views up here mount adams mount hood another mountain there rainier i mean it is 360 degree views basically just as far <laughs> as i can see which is just incredible so definitely some gnarly lines up here i'm not sure about the snow conditions at all but you know we're just gonna we're gonna see what we can do oh wow this is this is just beautiful. I think I'm gonna try this pinball one. Yeah, I've never been here before, but what about you? I'm just gonna do the ridge line, I think. 
Okay. I don't really know what to expect of the conditions, I guess. Yeah. Let's go, dude. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, baby. Get it up. Let's go! Wasn't perfect, but you know, stayed on our feet and we skied it. So let's go. Let's go. It was kind of interesting conditions to jump turn because the edges were so soft and obviously like the actual choke was, was rather firm. So if, like the tips would get hung up really easily. And these are 188s in length. So that's a, you know, it's a longer ski to be flipping through that choke. But honestly, very impressed with the, the 106 in that. And I think that's where just having the confidence in the whole platform is so crucial. Like in situations like that, where you're really torquing the ski both ways, like, you know, if you're not dialed in, it can be really easy to torque right out of your, your toe piece or kind of step out of the heel piece. So I just kind of knew that, you know, what I had was after using it for a few days was, was good for that stuff. And I even got in some tricky situations where the skis did get hung up, but luckily we stayed on our feet, which is always the main goal. And we, you know, we really skied it. I would like to say just about top to bottom. Oh, those are always such a sigh of relief and like, you know, I have the confidence I can do that stuff, but I'm also in the back of my mind, I'm like, whew. Anyways, I'm just stoked, super stoked. So now we can ski on the rest of the mountain. Oh man. Yes.
bon. I've literally spent all day on this chair six over here <clears throat> but it's honestly super fun lots of like lots of variation here it's essentially just like one big bowl but you had some glades you have some cliffs if you want them um and, but i've noticed the snow has changed quite uh quite a lot just as the day goes on because what was once in the shade and the sun is now in the shade so you kind of get that iced over uh, uh stuff that might have been good in the morning when it was softening up so very uh, uh, interesting day of skiing, but I will say these 106s have been the right ski for now up here in the PNW. They've just been really well in this sort of otherwise crud um, crud type of snow where I think the 116 might have struggled a little bit just because of that wider underfoot, more of that rock where there's really less edge contact and therefore a little bit harder to actually stay on, on these you know, I'm going to say packed powder type of, of snow here where the, the 106 is a little bit, has a little bit uh, less of that rocker and is obviously more narrow. So um, it's really able to get on, on the, the edge and they're still very sharp because they're only, I've only used these three or four days so far. So, but anyways, I'm ripping right to the, to the end of the day here because it is so incredibly beautiful. I don't think I've ever been to a mountain that is as beautiful as as Crystal Mountain, and I think it's all just because of this area. I mean, to be staring at Mount Rainier. I mean, I thought Rainier was only something you could get if you like went to the national park. So just be staring out at all of this insane like mountain beauty. I just I can't get over it. So I apologize if it's getting a little bit uh, redundant. But if this is your home mountain, I encourage you to not take this for granted because. There's not many mountains that have this magnitude of beauty just surrounded all around them. You don't even see a road in the distance. You don't see houses. Like this is a feels like a very true sort of alpine experience. So just sort of soaking this in as the light gets a little bit lower. Um, this is it's just gorgeous. You are. today was just pretty incredible. I mean, more than anything, the views of Mount Rainier and the surrounding volcanoes or mountains, whatever the hell they are, was just the highlight of the day. Being able to see uh, Washington and the Cascade Mountains like that in the winter was just, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but to come out of the gondola and like see that right in front of you, it's like, it, it was just unbelievable so just no complaints and i'm actually going to come back here tomorrow because i only touched chair six there's a whole other side of the mountain that i didn't get to explore so i am going to do another day here at crystal lastly i want to touch base on this bag skiing with it felt really great and i think that's one of the most important things is skiing with a backpack do you still feel good to ski with it uh, and i think for the size i didn't even notice a difference between this and the 16 liter gopro backpack that i usually use the straps are just, they're just right in the correct spots, super comfortable. And having these side straps to put my skis in on a day like this when I'm hiking up is just a really nice addition 
um, that really doesn't add anything extra to the bag. I think it looks badass. Looks like you're about to jump out of a plane or something and just shoot a bunch of bad guys. Um, and there's a lot of features to this that I honestly didn't even really scratch the surface of. However, one of the reasons that I struggled with the bag a little bit, my only way I struggled with it was I felt like the bag <clears throat> got in the way of shooting sometimes. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is with my GoPro bag, I can essentially just undo the buckle with, with my gloves on one hand, boom, take the bag off, rip it open, have my camera, and I'm ready to shoot. With this, it's like I had to take my gloves off to release the buckles. Then I had to, you know, put on the ground. Then I had to, like, find where the zipper was because it kind of gets, like, hidden. Then I get the zipper out undone, you know, after it get hooked on stuff. Then I got to take it, the camera cube, like, then I got to unzip the camera cube is what I'm trying to say. And then, it, and then, so I just, I felt like the bag sometimes got in the way of me shooting. And I'm like, dude, I just need to grab my camera and shoot. I don't have time for like all this stuff. So it might not be a huge deal for most people. And it honestly wasn't enough. It wasn't like a deal breaker for what the bag provided on days like this, but just something I noticed. And I think will get better as I use the bag more, just figure it out. But it is hard to beat something like as simple as this, where I can just unzip, boom, and I'm ready to shoot because everything I do in the mountain is so run and gun and a lot of times I need this shot within like two to five seconds of seeing something. So I'm gonna end the vlog here because I am beat. Gnarly day, can't wait to do it again. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy fam, peace out.